Hey everyone, it's Brian Shannon here from alphatrends.net. Today is Saturday. It's the 19th of October, 2013. We had a great week in the market. Uh, the S&P 500 up uh, close to 2.5%. NASDAQ up a little bit more than 3.5%. And uh, oil was down slightly, as was the U.S. dollar, while bonds came back and gold came back as well. We'll take a look at the charts uh, here. And we continue to see the same th theme, that only price pays. And that when the primary trend is higher, all those little pullbacks that we see are reasons to become cautious but not become bearish. We spoke last week about the uh, break of the trend line and that breaking a trend line doesn't mean that the market will reverse. I said that uh, it typically it means the rate of ascent has slowed but that's certainly not the case here for the S&P 500 as the market really took off to the upside. We came into the week thinking that we wanted to see uh, that uh, the market would hold 168 to 168 and a half. Well, of course, we saw that the, the lows for the week were right in here at about 169 uh, on that first uh, pullback uh, on uh, Monday. But then it's been a pattern of higher highs and higher lows. And really, anyone who's selling short in here, uh, you just don't sell short for an intermediate term trade while we have a rising five-day moving average. This is a consistent theme for the last decade that I've been talking about. You just cannot be putting the odds against you like that. When the uh, market is below the declining five-day moving average, we look at it as guilty till proven innocent in the intermediate term, and it's turned back up and remains innocent till proven guilty. We can talk all we want about how it looks extended, or we can take a look at things like the measured move and say, uh, if, it, if this is A to B right here, the A being the low and B being the high, that we could take the measured move, that these are supposed, supposedly uh, going to be approximately equal, and what we would do is take Take uh, this and add it to that. Uh, to, so here, let me uh, re-explain that. What we'd be talking about: this is point A to point B. This is point C, the pullback, and the height of that. Uh, this uh, being uh, C to D should equal to A to B. So this being A, B. C and leads up to point D. And we're getting close to that, uh, just above 175 and a half. But you know, with the market at all time highs here for the S&P 500, nobody knows where this thing's going to end. We can look at, at projections and say there's a potential level of resistance. And this past week was a great example of that, really, in the uh, financials. The financials have been really kind of a choppy mess this year. They are back to new highs, but they've been really choppy in here the last uh, several months. And what we had seen was this market was stuck below its declining five-day moving average. It gapped above it a week and a half ago, and then we were looking at these levels as, as potential resistance. So we were looking at it as potential resistance, but we said you don't want to sell short unless it gets up there and actually sees resistance, and then we get a pattern of lower highs and lower lows below a declining five-day moving average. Then it's okay to short, but you simply do not short while the trend is higher, and we have higher highs and higher lows and a rising five-day day moving average. It's a concept, again, that I've said over and over again for the last decade and really emphasized this year. So for the SPY next week, what we, you know, we're obviously getting extended and you can try to pick the top all you want, but, you know, saying that we're at the top right uh, today might be similar to this day or it might be similar to this day or that day. We simply don't know where the top is going to be. We do know that risks are, are greater to, to make fresh purchases as the market is extended, but if you're comfortable with it and, and you have a uh, stop loss uh, in mind, then you could still get involved in the uh, S&P 500 long. I would prefer that it pulls back and we could start to look at uh, maybe, uh, you know, where are potential scenarios uh, that this market could pull back to. A 38% retracement of the current rally would bring us down to 171. I, I don't think that we're going to get down there, though. I think that we are probably uh, going to continue to move higher until this market says otherwise. That's the easy call because because that's what markets do. They, they, they continue in the path of least resistance. And the path of least resistance is clearly higher here. It doesn't mean just run out and buy things with two hands. Instead, it means that we want to be aware of the setups and look to the individual stocks for the low risk setups. And that's where uh, Alpha Trends continues to be focused. Let's take a look at the NASDAQ. The NASDAQ, we were looking at uh, this, this market potentially pulling back down towards uh, 78 and a half to 79 and really the lows this week 
we saw a word about 78 and a half. Uh, so we were looking at, I'm sorry, 78 to 78 and a half. Uh, and then new highs is what I was talking about in last week's video. And that's exactly what we saw here. We've got a very powerful uptrend and a huge percentage uh, move this week, 3.6%. The market, again, you can argue all you want that it's overbought. You can argue all you want that it's only up because of the Fed or it's only because of this or that or it's at the top end of this range. Therefore, I'm going to short it. But the fact is you've got no business shorting a market that's above a rise five-day moving average with higher highs and higher lows unless you don't mind uh, it going against you for a while and then eventually you can say yeah see I got it right I picked the top um, but it's just a lot easier on us as traders to, to go with the primary trend to say it's innocent till proven guilty show me the low risk stock setups and uh, you know what's what's the nature of this market right now the nature of this market is we had a fearful event behind us uh, a kind of rush to relief to buy and shorts are getting killed um, and realistically, the shorts are getting what they deserve for being short in a market that's running higher. You can't really talk about valuation and, and uh, overbought uh, and, and try to sell short. The timing just simply won't work. The Russell 2000 was up uh, nicely this week. It continues into all-time high territory. So we were looking at this market thinking uh, maybe we would get a pullback uh, first to about 106 and a half, 107, and uh, 106 and a half to uh, 106. Uh, the lows for the week were right about 107, so it just remained super strong and above that rising five-day moving average. So again, no business being short a market that's doing that. Same is true for the semiconductors. They held some important support Thursday morning as they gapped lower, and uh, now they're continuing to move to multi-year highs here, uh, levels not seen since really uh, 2004 or so. Um, so you know this market, maybe it's headed up towards 45. We simply don't know. Uh, there's no accurate way to, to measure where the top or, or the bottom is, but we want to be, uh, you know, stand to the sidelines as things get, uh, as they're declining or be short and, uh, you know, not fight the momentum of the day, which is clearly still higher in these markets. Bonds recovered a little bit this week and they're trying to make a, a, a little bit of a low here. I still don't trust it. We, we're right at a declining 100 day moving average. We've got a declining 150 and 200 day moving average as well. So perhaps we get some further bounce in the bonds, but uh, I think eventually this rally will uh, be failing in, in somewhat near term. Uh, gold, uh, we've been talking about the potential that it would head back down towards 113. I still think that's reasonable to expect, but uh, not right away because the pattern of lower highs and lower lows was broken on Thursday with that gap higher. Uh, right in here. So right now, I think that uh, gold is neutral at best. And um, let's take a look now at Apple because Apple is doing what we kind of thought it would do, which is to head up towards about 510 or so. The high, the, the, it closed last year at 532. So we're getting pretty close to moving uh, to uh, positive territory for the um, for shares of Apple. If you're long Apple on a uh, intermediate term basis swing trade, I think that you raise your stop up underneath one of these higher lows that makes the most sense for you and uh, go from there. Earnings uh, were this week and you know on Friday we saw CMG report in, in a monster move to the upside, 16%. Google up 13%. And you know you look at the primary trends. Google was in an uptrend. CMG was in an uptrend. Then you take a look at uh, you know kind of of what people viewed as a disaster this week which was, was IBM which uh, was down about 12 points on earnings and look at the primary trend in here the primary trend you know we're looking at a yearly or I'm sorry weekly chart for five years we had the higher highs and higher lows then we saw the distribution and now we see the lower highs and lower lows on the weekly time frame so IBM is guilty till proven innocent it's in a downtrend it in fact it, it looks a lot like uh, shares of VMware did really about over here. So, and VMware is still trying to recover. But if you look at the pattern in here of VMware versus the, the pattern uh, of IBM, just as it's kind of breaking right here, uh, they look very similar. So, I don't think that uh, the worst is behind for, for IBM. And, you know, that was already in a downtrend. My point is that news and surprises tend to follow the direction of the trend. It's not always that case, though. There was a good example of that this week, which was 
shows FLIR, and it shows the the danger basically of of, of uh, holding a stock in front of earnings. If we take a look at this, uh, the way the stock looked on Tuesday, you can see here, you know, it had broken some resistance and was seemingly breaking out uh, uh, past that level with a higher low right in here. And those people who bought in front of the earnings woke up and got a really uh, terrible surprise, you know, as the stock is now down about 10% and hasn't recovered yet. Then, you know, we spoke about last week some of these biotech stocks. The biotech stocks, one of them I mentioned was Aria Pharmaceuticals. And, you know, look at what happened to this thing on Friday, just at another horrible gap lower. Some people look to buy these things, but, you know, it closed basically four and a half on Thursday. And here we are two points lower on Friday. Just stay away from these biotech stocks. They are uh, just, you know, it was in a huge uptrend and it took, uh, you know, this is, as they say, take the stairs up and the elevator down. Um, that's exactly what happened here. But uh, all, you know, three three years of, of hard work to get up here uh, destroyed in just a couple of weeks. Some of the uh, stocks that stood out for Alpha Trend subscribers this week, there's obviously a lot of great winners in the market. Everyone's got uh, winners they can brag about. But the, the point that I want to make uh, about the winners that we have were stocks like uh, SCTY. We were looking at this one as it broke this uh, resistance on Wednesday and, and on Wednesday this is the level right in here is it crossed back above volume weighted average price where we were getting involved in it now I used it for a day trade that day and took about five points out of it but you know the stock obviously continued much higher and the point is that what I really my specialty is is helping people get involved at the right time a low risk uh, area and then letting them decide whether they want to trade it for the day or if they want to hold it longer term I thought there was was too much uh uncertainty in the market. I held it for a day trade. It was still a great trade, but you know, of course, I'd still like to hold it up here, but th there's there's no woulda, shoulda, coulda's allowed. You have to go with what you have, learn from it, move on. We uh, uh, On Thursday, uh, Solar City, we bought it right here just as this stock ran $5. I mean, it was just a beautiful run. And the point is that you know, you look at the market this past week and it was extended, but there were stocks like so, uh, SFUN where we bought it right here and our stop was just 50 cents away or so. I mean, the point is low risk, high probability setups to buy right here as the momentum comes back in with a stop just below that consolidation low. And we had we were risking about 50, 60 cents and ended up making five dollars on the trade. So it's basically a, a 10 to one risk reward. Of course, risk reward is all theoretical and uh, based on you know the numbers that we put on there. Um, MY was another nice stock. We got involved right as it crossed three bucks a share here. And that took off, you know, on a percentage basis. It ran 10% instantly, and here it is up 13%. Uh, one that we actually avoided uh, uh, this week, and we wanted to look at it because it had a big short position. The weekly chart was looking like maybe it was uh, bottoming out here, and that's MCP. MCP, you know, the 200. It was holding above the 200-day moving average. It was showing this consolidation in here, and what we were looking for was actually for it to break above this uh, $7.30 level. We were going to buy it above $7.30. I like the way it closed on uh, uh, Wednesday. We were going to buy it above that level with a worst case stop down here. But because it gapped lower, we never got involved and didn't have to live through this disaster. The point is, we didn't buy it as it was in a range. Instead, we wanted to wait for a higher high to, to develop above a rising five-day moving average. So it's about having a consistent methodology and buying when the momentum comes into the stock and then being able to have a system that allows you to ride those stocks for the amount of time that you're comfortable with. If you're a swing trader, the ideas like SCTY, SFUN, you can still be holding those with wider stops. And I'm always happy to help people adjust their stops for the time frame that they're working on. So if you are uh, if you haven't taken a trial subscription to Alpha Trends, uh, please do so and take a look and see for yourself whether it's something that you think can, can help you. I promise that you're going to learn stuff, and I'm going to bring low-risk, high-probability trades to you each and every day. Thanks for listening.